According to a study by University of Colorado, for every 100,000 athletic exposures, 4.2% involve head, head injuries from girls' soccer and 28 involve in head injuries for boys' soccer. This statistic can also be made for all states. What has been done to prevent these injuries? At a local school called Central Harden, coaches, trainers, and athletic administrators are doing all they can to prevent these injuries. Chris Ernst is the head coach for the girls' soccer team, and when asked what Central has done for, for the soccer team, he explains. Uh, you know, protecting soccer players ministry is very important. Uh, we have a great training staff. Uh, we condition regularly before the season. We have to make sure we're acclimated to heat, um, and proper technique on the soccer field is very important. He later states that head injuries are mostly caused by poor technique when performing headers. Teach that to make sure you're protecting yourself when you go up. A lot of concussions happen in soccer because people aren't protecting themselves when they go up for a ball. According to Ernst, shin guards are the only thing mandatory in soccer. But when he is asked if headers are encouraged despite the risk of possible injuries, he says headers are most encouraged. Uh, headers are encouraged because they are a big part of the game. They're big. Uh, if you're not using your head, you're missing out on part of the game. When asked if a situation came up where a head injury did occur, he explains what would happen. Uh, they, they would be pulled from the game or practice immediately, um, go through the regular protocol of you know, on-field testing and then to the base, looking at their baseline test and going back for impact testing. If it is a concussion, then there's protocol in place to uh, light activity before we work our way back into, a, into game settings again. But the girls' soccer team is not the only victim to such injuries. Tyler Vessels is the head coach of the junior varsity boys' soccer team. When asked how many head injuries occur in boys' soccer, he states, um, In soccer, that's, that's been a big emphasis the last probably two or three, four years or so. Um, thankfully, we don't have too many, or we haven't had that many cases in the last couple of years. We have had a few kids that have gotten concussions, and depending on the severity of it, they may have to sit um, for three or four days, maybe a week, week and a half, depending on, on how bad of an injury it was. When he is asked about the difference between the intensity of boys and girls soccer, he states, um, I mean, I, I feel like probably, I, mean, I don't know statistics wise exactly what it is. Um, I would assume they're probably pretty similar because the situations where they would occur with a ball in the air or a keeper coming out where they may get punched in the head or, um, you know, a tackle where they fall and they hit their head. I would think those would be similar cases, so I would, I would think it's probably somewhat. When asked how often the players are trained to perform the proper technique for headers, he states. Um, we usually try at the beginning of every season just to make sure any new kids that are coming in that, um, you know, they know the proper way to, to head a ball to hopefully help prevent that. So. He then extends this answer by explaining the impact testing. I know one of the things that the school has done that you may have already talked about somewhere else is we now do impact testing. So basically every year any player that's new to the program or I guess they do maybe sophomores, is, so it's new players and sophomores, or maybe it's juniors, I'm not sure, I don't remember. Um, but they have them go to the computer lab and they do like a baseline test, probably like a 40 minute test of like just testing their reactions and, and their memory. And so that sets like the standard for like their brain, I guess. And so then if they were to get a concussion, then they, before they're cleared to play, they have to go back and retake that test. Um, and they have to pass, they have to get that score that they got before they had the injury. They have to go to get that before they're able to play again. So the district has taken some steps too to try to help prevent further injuries and prevent kids from coming back to play before they're ready to actually play. So. He is then asked how many concussions an athlete is allowed to have before he is no longer fit to play. I don't know if there's an actual number per se, or if there is, I don't know what it is. I think it a lot of times depends on, on that individual athlete and then their doctor, and obviously to the severity of the injury, whether it was a minor concussion or a pretty major concussion, I think could depend because it, you know, um, it could be where they could have several and they're still okay, or there are probably some athletes where they have two or three, and then they're probably saying, you know, if you get one more, you may have to stop playing or that kind of thing. So I think that probably varies a little bit player to player. 
Vessel states that, unfortunately, head injuries cannot be avoided unless you use proper technique. But fortunately, Central Harden is taking this issue head on. From Central Harden, this has been Trevor Stover with HCEC-TV.